degree that we are affected depends on the life of that person. Na sasa yani um, kule kuadhirika kunategemea na hali ya maisha ya huyo mtu anayoishi. So this is very important for ministers themselves how not to be affected by members and also to teach the members how not to be affected to be affected by the people around them. Na hii basi ni fundisho muhimu sana kwa wale ambao ni viongozi wa kanisa wajue jinsi wanavyoweza kuongoza makanisa na wasije wakaadhiriwa na wale watu wanaoongoza na hata wale ambao wamewazunguka. Amen. And I want you to think about it. Nataka ufikirie kuhusu hili jambo. The many people you you've seen around you are they affected by their spouse in some way? Ya kwamba hebu uweke katika mawazo ufikirie kwamba je watu ambao umewajua wengi wameadhirika kwa mfano mume alimwadhiri mkewe au mkewe akamwadhiri mmeo For instance if the husband is not good you see the wife being affected by the husband Basi kama mwanaume hata kuwa mwanaume anayejua kutunza mkewe utapata huyo mke anakuwa na matatizo kwa sababu gani kwa sababu yanatoka kwa mmewe And also pastors or leaders are affected by people who complain to to them. Na hata wachungaji pia wanaadhirika na maneno kwa sababu watu wanaongea maneno kinyume mengi kwa Yes. And when people come to church very often, you know, in the beginning, the people welcome them and, and are nice to them. Na kwa mfano watu wanapoingia kanisani ni wageni, kipindi cha kwanza wale wanaowakaribisha wanakuwa marafiki zao. But after a while they notice that the people in the church also have problems. Lakini sasa wakisha kaa mlo kanisani kwa muda itagundulika kwamba hata wale washirika wa kanisa wana matatizo sasa wanaanza kuathiri. And then they are affected by the the uh, the Christians who complain or gossip. Sasa hawa washirika wa, walio kuja wageni wanaadhiriwa na ule umea wa Kristo ambao ni wazee kwenye hiyo kanisa. Now let me ask you are, are there some people in your life that makes you feel unhappy and feel feel that you don't have much strength? Je, ni kuulize katika maisha yako ushawahi kugundua ya kwamba kuna watu fulani ambao kila mara na kila saa wanakufanya kwamba wewe usiwe na furaha wanakukasirisha kila wakati Are you affected by some people in some way? Na je, wewe umeadhirika na watu kama hao? So, it's very important to learn how not to be affected by people. Sasa ni la muhimu kujifundisha kwamba utafanya vipi ili usiadhiriwe na hao watu. Because the Bible has said all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Na kemaandiko yasema kwamba wote wametenda dhambi na kupungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu. That all people have sinned. Hiyo watu wote wametenda dhambi. That's why it's very natural for them to gossip or to complain. Ndio maana ni jambo tu la kawaida mtu kusengenya mwingine na mtu kubebea mwingine maneno maneno or to be angry with people ama mwingine kukasirikia mwingine now in the old testament we see joseph the son of jacob tunaona katika agano la kale yusufu mwana wa yakobo he was sold by his brothers to egypt yeye aliuzwa na kaka zake katika nchi ya misri imagine if you were joseph being sold hebu fikiria kama ungelikuwa wewe ndio yusufu unayeuzwa how would you feel naturally katika hisia zangu utahisi namna gani? When he was so what feelings would he have? Alipokuwa akiuzwa alikuwa anahisi namna gani? Now we should learn the basic feelings you can write this down it's important for you to understand feelings you write this down. Basi kuna zile hisia za kawaida tano naomba muandike chini hii hisia za kawaida. Okay these are of feelings. Ya kwamba ni vikundi vya hisia. First is Now I'll go through all the first. Glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed, hurts. So first one is glad. Glad. Happy. Yeah. Glad, happy. Ya kwanza ni kuwa na furaha. The first and the second sad. Ya pili ni kukasirika. And the three mad, angry. Na ya tatu ni kuwa Angry. Sad, Come again. Angry. Can you 
Oh, I'm talking about the six basic groups of feelings. Anazungumza kuhusu hisia sita za vikundi sita vya hisia. So the groups are glad, sad, mad, mad is afraid. Aha. Ya kwanza amesema nilikuwa na furaha, ya pili nilikuwa na uzuni, na ya tatu akasema nilikuwa na uoga. Okay, that's number three. Number four. They say you go slowly there, right? Okay. Glass said map, so you repeat it. Amesema kuwa na furaha, kuwa na uzuni, na ya tatu ikawa kuwa na uoga. And then afraid. That is point. Number four. Number four. Glass said map, afraid, ashamed, hurt. Six basic feelings. Ya kwanza imesema tumesema ya kwanza ni kuwa na furaha ya pili kuwa na uzuni ya tatu what is point 3 glad sad mad mad is anger aha anasema kwamba ya tatu ni kuwa na hasira na sumesha anataka kuwa na hasira you have to memorize it you have to memorize it Okay. Number four. Number four. Fura uzuni uoga asira. Kwa hivyo mtaata mkuje mfanyi utafisiri njini sasa. Nafuge ni mchezo. Fura. I want them to name what they have written down. Ya kwanza ni? Fura. Ya pili? Uzuni. Ya tatu? Uoga. Ya nne? Asira. Shida ikuwa pisa? Aida. Number five. Number five are shame. That means shame and guilt. Yani kuwa na aibu ya tano. Two feelings. Shame and guilt. So, a shame. Yani unakuwa na aibu. Mi aibu. Kuwa na aibu. And number six is hurts. Ya sita ni kule kuumizu ama kujeruhiwa. Go through them. Tumesema ya kwanza ni kuwa na raha. Kuwa na uzuni. Kuwa na uoga Kuwa na sira Kuwa na kuchiruhiwa Ok, now when Joseph was sold to Egypt What, how would he feel? All of these six feelings, how would he feel? Wakati Yusufu anapo uzwa katika inji ya misiri Kati ya imi vitu sita ambavyo tumeweka chini Alihisi gani? What feelings? So look at this six. What feelings would he have? Angalia kwa zile tu sita mbazo tumeziandika. Alikuwa na anahisia ipi kwa hizo zote sita mbazo tumeziandika. Sini zote. Zote. What did he say? What did he say? He says something. Kasu says something. They're saying five of them. No. Name one by one. Aya, anasema, tutaje moja baada ya gini. Alikuwa na uzuni upi. Namba ya kwanza ni gani? Alikuwa na uzuni. Alikuwa na uzuni. Namba tatu. Namba three. Alikuwa na uzuni. Namba three is anger. Namba two. Namba two. Namba two. Don't say number two. You have to remember the names. Remember the names. Don't say number two. Namba two. Namba two. It was sad. Sad. Now, sad includes worry. Sad includes worry. Yani kuwa na uzuni, unakuwa pia na ya... Yani hauja tulia kabisa, unafadaika. Okay. Now, he would have... Now, glad, probably not. How kuwa na furaha kabisa? Sad, he would be sad and worry. You know, what? why did the brothers do this to me? Alikuwa na uzuni, na kufadaika. Kwa nini hawa ndugu zangu wakalifanya hivyo? And then, man, anger. He might have some anger toward his brothers. And then, afraid. He would be afraid. Where would he be going? Now, ashamed. 
and guilt I don't know maybe he doesn't have it na pia tuseme kama labda hakuwa na aibu kwa sababu hakuwa na joint wapi anakokwenda but hurt feeling he would have lakini alikuwa pia na hisia zile mbaya kabisa nazo he would feel he would feel hurt by his brothers alisikia amejeruhiwa amejeruhiwa na ndugu zake the point is if he continue to be affected by the brothers and continue to have this negative feelings he would not do well in egypt Eha, basi la muhimu hapa kuelewa ni kwamba kama yeye angeliendelea kubeba kwenye moyo wake haya mambo yote kutokana kwa yale ndugu zake walikuwa wamemfanyia basi yeye hangefanya vizuri katika mji wa Misri. In Genesis 39 verse 3, verse 2. Katika kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya 39 mstari wa pili, mwanzo 39 sura mstari wa pili. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Ya kwamba Mungu alikuwa na Yusufu, niposa Yusufu aliendelea zaidi. Now it says here the Lord was with Joseph. Imesema hapo kwamba Mungu alikuwa na Yusufu. If Joseph continued to have fear and worry, kama Yusufu angeliendelea kuishi katika uoga na kufadhaika, he would not have a good relationship with God. Hangelikuwa na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. But because of his relationship has been strong with God. Lakini kwa sababu uhusiano wake ulikuwa wa mgubu zaidi na Mungu. In this difficult times he would believe in God's protection and direction. Katika kipindi hiki kigumu yeye aliamini ya kwamba Mungu anaweza akamkomboa baadaye. So he continued to have a good relationship with God. Kwa hivyo aliendelea kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. Now how do we know that he had a good relationship with God? Basi tunajua kwamba uko na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. Because the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. Ni kwa sababu maandiko yasema kwamba Mungu alikuwa na Yusufu. If he was complaining and worrying all day long the Lord would not Asikama be strong with na kufanya mambo mengine ambayo hayajafurahisha Mungu. So he must be praying much to the Lord and trusting in the Lord. Yeye hakulalamika lakini aliendelea kumwamini Mungu. And so the Lord was with him. Na sasa Mungu alikuwa pamoja naye. And he prospered. Na yeye akanawili zaidi. And you imagine that too, he doesn't he didn't speak the language of the Egyptians. Kumbuka kwamba yeye hata hakuwa anaelewa lugha ya wale wa Misri. When he went there he did not speak a word of Egyptian. Yaani alipoenda kule yeye hakuzungumza vile wa Misri walivyokuwa kizungumza. So he had to learn the language. Ilifaa ajifundishe and he served his master na sasa akamtumikia yule bwana wake and the master saw that he was doing so well na yule bwana wake akagundua kwamba huyu mtu anafanya kazi vizuri sana then he appointed him his most important helper na akamchagua akawa msaidizi wa muhimu kwake because the lord was with him to bless him ni kwa sababu mungu alikuwa na yusufu kumbariki and in genesis Chapter 50 verse 20 Katika mwanzo sura ya 50 mstari wa 20 mwanzo sura ya 50 mstari wa 20 When he saw his brothers again alipowaona ndugu zake mara tena He said this to them Aliwaambia haya You intended to harm me but God intended it for good to accomplish what he has what is now being done and saving of many lives Mlikusudia kunijeruhi lakini makusudi ya Mungu yalikuwa mema zaidi ndipo sasa alifanya hivyo ili akamilishe yale ambayo mnayaona yakikamilika So in the process Joseph has learned about God's plan Na sasa katika mipango hiyo zote Yusufu alijifundisha kuhusu mpango wa Mungu He saw that even though his brothers want to harm him Aligundua kwamba ijapo kuwa hata ndugu zangu wale kuwa na nia ya kunijeruhi. Now we must understand it's not God who caused the brothers to sell him. Basi tuelewe kwamba sio Mungu aliyowafanya wale ndugu zake wakamuuza. Because no sin comes from God. Manake hakuna dhambi inayotokana kwa Mungu. But in a process when his brothers try to harm him, God has a wonderful plan. Lakini ijapo kuwa ndugu zake walikuwa na madhumuni ya kumuumiza, Mungu naye alikuwa na mpango mwema na maisha yake. In the midst of all this difficulties, God intended it for good. Na ijapo kuwa ndugu zake walikuwa na nia mbaya, lakini nia ya Mungu ilikuwa njema zaidi. To save many souls and also prepare the Israelites in Egypt. Ili kuokoa mioyo mingi na kuandaa wale wa Israeli jinsi watakavyotoka katika nchi ya Misri. And then one day they left Egypt, God took them out 
uh, with the hands of Moses. Na siku moja wana Israeli wakaondolewa katika mji wa Misri kupitia kwa mtumishi wa Mungu Musa. So let them know that they were in the power of sin and the world and now God saved them. I took them out from the world to his so God has a wonderful plan in the life of Joseph and in the life of the Israelites. And the Bible has told us that God has a wonderful plan for each person. Psalm 139 verses 16 to 17. Starting with the middle of verse 16. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Aha, inasema kwamba siku zote ziliyowekewa wakfu ziliandikwa katika kitabu kabla mimi sijakuja kuzitambua. Wewe Mungu ni Mungu wa ni Mungu mwema na mawazo yako ni mema na wewe ni Mungu ambaye how wewe ni Mungu ambaye hauharibu muda wako jinsi ulivyopanga so god has a plan for each one of us and it's already written in god's book in basi Mungu ana mpango mzuri na kila mmoja wetu na hizo mipango zote zimeandikwa katika kitabu cha Mungu amen and then in verse 17 all that was written were precious thoughts Na katika mstari wa 17 unasema kwamba yale yote yaliyoandikwa katika kitabu cha Mungu ni mawazo mema peke yake. And there were, was a large number of these precious thoughts. Na sasa kulikuwa na mawazo mengi ambayo ni mema kuhusu mipango za Mungu na mwanadamu. In verse 18 katika mstari wa 18 it says that it's so numerous that it's more numerous than the sand on the beach. Katika mstari wa 18 unasema kwamba hizo mipango za Mungu aliyozipangia wanadamu ni nyingi sana sana kushinda ule mchanga unaopatikana kwenye kando kando ya ziwa. That means God has a wonderful plan written for each person. Inamaanisha Mungu ana mpango mzuri kwa kila mmoja na ameuandika chini. And in this plan he wrote all the precious thoughts, all the wonderful ideas that he has planned for us. Na mawazo yote aliyoandika katika kile kitabu chake ni mawazo mema and there were a large number of them. That is, every day God has many wonderful ideas for us. So Joseph believed that too. He believed that God intended all for his for the good of him and the Israelites. That is why he was not affected by his brothers. Now I want to say every person would have some bad people around them. Not everyone around them around us is bad but there must be some bad sio kwamba wale watu ambao wametuzunguka wote ni wabaya lakini kati ya watu 200 lazima tuko na wawili wabaya ambao hawakupendi people who might hurt us or discourage us lakini mungu anasema kwamba usishushwe moyo na watu kama hao if we look at these people will be affected by them ukiangalia katika hawa watu watakudhuru amen now one time i went to a church to serve one time I you know I, I moved to Hong Kong, moved back to Hong Kong and then I was in a church helping a pastor. And a few months after I went there, the senior pastor said to me, Would you like to be the senior pastor? 
I don't want to be the senior pastor. Because every time after I preach, my wife would complain to me. And said that my preaching was not good. And he felt very discouraged. So his wife was giving him negative influence. And he was taking this negative influence. And then he lost strength. Let me, I, I want to let you know that since I start ministering, there have been different people that gave me negative influence. And but from the Bible, I realize that if I'm, if I'm affected by them, I will have no joy. Actually, for a period of time, I was under much pressure. I was very unhappy. But I kept crying to God. God, you must have a way. Have mercy upon me. Now, at that time, I was not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. I just cried out to the Lord. Oh, Lord, help me. This is so difficult. But my goal is not to keep thinking about what the person does. My goal was to get strength from the Lord. And in this process, I learned to trust in the Lord more. These years of trusting the Lord in times of difficulties has helped me to have this dependence on God. And then later when the when in 1998 when the evangelist lay hand on me the experience of the Holy Spirit. I was my heart was really open. And then I saw that I can experience God's Love like that, I was I really appreciated God. I said this is the best thing that can happen to me. And I spent a long time praying. Now one day I shared this with someone on the phone. Siku moja akashiriki mahushuda wake na mtu kupitia njia ya simu. But this person was not open to the work of the Holy Spirit. And she was angry with me and she yelled at me. And I hang up the phone. When I pray, I found that I did not have the joy that I have been having. The Holy Spirit prompted me to do something about the relationship. So I call her again. Now I cannot say I'm sorry I did something wrong. Because I did not do anything wrong. But I said, if I made you unhappy, I'm sorry about it. But she was still angry. And then she hung up the phone again. And then I said, well, I have handled it already. I have done my part. I don't have to keep thinking about what she said. And I pray to God and the joy came back again. And the Holy Spirit prompted me. From now on, if anyone hurts you, do your part to handle it. And do not be affected by the mercy. 
So I just say I don't have to worry about her. I just let go. I have the Lord. The Lord will open the way for me. The Lord will bless me. I'm just trusting God. And then I'll be strengthened. So I have learned to turn all people's negative words. And at the same time I try to be nice to them. The main thing is if I am affected by them. I would have no strength and no joy. So today I'm going to talk about how we can overcome this negative influence. It is not just a one-time teaching today. I hope you apply it every day of your life. And also teach the people, teach the people to follow this. Na pia utawafundisha watu kwa kuwata mafundisho haya. Amina, yes. The Bible verse is Psalm 118 verse 6. Aha, kwenye Biblia, Zaburi miyamoja kumina nane mstari wa sita. Zaburi miyamoja kumina nane mstari wa sita. There it says that, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can people do to me? Ya kwamba mungu yuko pamoja na misita wagopa chochote kile ambacho watu watatenda kinyume na mimi. So he says that the Lord is with me. I said, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of anything. Mungu ako pamoja na mimi. Sita wagopa lolote. So what can people do to me? Kwa hivyo ni watu watanifanya nini kama mungu wako upande wa? Let me ask you. Hebu ni waulize. Is God more powerful or is God? Is man more powerful? See, kati ya mungu na wanadamu, ni nani alie na nguvu zaidi? Good. So God is more powerful. Kwa hivyo mungu wa na nguvu zaidi, would he allow the bad people to take away God's plan for you? See, kwa sababu mungu ndiyo wa nguvu zaidi, nako na mipango, mizuri na wewe. See, ataruhusu wanadamu ambao haona nguvu wa kuja wa kunyanganya mipango za mungu? No, he won't. Now is it? So this thought came to me. One day we go to heaven. God would not say to you, I'm sorry, I forgot to help you. So these bad people took away the wonderful plan I have planned for you. So you are always a weak Christian. Because of these people, I'm sorry I did not help you. Let me ask you this. Does God have to apologize to us in heaven? Because God is working on our lives. He is helping us not to look at people. Not to depend on people. Even though people do help us. But the help of people compared to the help of God, which is greater. Yeah. And God's help is more complete. And in every way, too. God, people can only help us in a little way. Yeah. And also people will from time to time give us negative feedback. What now what I could say idea quantia no gonna be a what I could what I could say my name or you could say this. So we should memorize this verse. If God is for us, no one I'm not I'm not afraid. What can people do to me? What do you want to do with what I find a need? Now I use an illustration. Now you be very careful how you use this illustration. The bad things from people, the negative words are like garbage. Yeah, the mambo mabaya ya watu matusi na mawazo mabaya ni kama taka taka. 
It's truly garbage. Nitakataka ambayo inatoa vundo mbaya. Because it came from the sinful nature. Kwa sababu hiyo takataka imetokana katika hali ya dhambi ya wanadamu. It came from the anger and the selfishness. Ilitokana katika hasira na uchoyo wa wanadamu. And then they will say negative words. Na sasa hao watu watazungumza maneno kinyume kuhusu. And actually this can be the fiery thoughts of Satan. Na sasa labda hao mambo haya yanaweza kuwa ni mwanya ambao shetani anataka kuingia katika maisha yako. Satan uses negative words to attack us. Yes, shetani anatumia mambo haya mabaya ili akuja kupige vita wewe. But there are many people who keep thinking about this negative words. Lakini kuna watu ambao wao wanaendelea kufikiri kuhusu hayo maneno kinyume walio ongelewa na watu wengine. The negative words is maybe spoken once. Maneno haya yanaongelelewa tu safari moja. And a person may say you fall. Kwa mfano mtu anaweza kukuambia wewe ni pumbao, wewe ni jinga. And then this person keep thinking. Na sasa ukishaambiwa hivyo wewe unaweka sasa bidii kufikiria mbona huyu mtu akaniambia hivyo. I'm not a fool. Mimi si mjinga. Mbona ameniita mjinga? Why did he say that to me? Mbona akaniita mjinga na mimi si mjinga? And then he gets angry. Na sasa unakasirika. And then he keep thinking about it. Alafu sasa unaendelea kufikiria kuyauzu. Sometimes people think about the negative words of people for months or for years or for the whole life. Kwa mfano kuna mtu ukimwambia jambo atalibeba kifuani chake zaidi ya mwaka mzima. And then what happened is they were continue to anger. Sasa wewe kwa sababu umenishikilia lile jambo utaendelea kuwa na hasira kila wakati. Na utakuwa na hisia mbaya. So one thing we have to discern. Kitu ambacho lazima tupambanue. Let me ask you. Hebu niwaulize. Are there some people around you who always speak negatively? Je, popote penye unaishi ama kanisani penye unatembea. Kuna watu ambao huwa wanaongea maneno kinyume kuhusu Are there people around you like that? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Have they changed through the years? Have they changed? Through the years? Have they changed? How are watu wanaweza kubadilika wa tangu uwajue wanaongea maneno kinyume umekaa nao kwa muda wameshawahi badilika? No. It's so one thing we discern is hard for people to change. Kitu ambacho lazima uelewe ni kwamba kuna watu wengine ni wagumu kubadilisha mienendo zao. People who are angry, they continue to be angry. Yaani mtu kama amekasirika, atakasirika milele yote. Unless they are changed by God. Yaani mtu anayeweza kubadilisha watu hao ni Mungu peke yake. Now even some people believe in Jesus, they are not changed by God. Kuna watu wengine ndio wanaamini Kristo Yesu lakini hawajabadilishwa na Mungu. Because many Christians don't know how to handle the anger. Kwa sababu wakristo wengi hawajui jinsi ya kushughulikia mtu kama ana hasira. So they go home and they yell at the spouse and the children. Sasa huku ametusiwa anapoenda kule nyumbani anapata mkewe sasa ile hasira inaishia kwa mkewe huko. Most people are not aware of the negative thinking and feeling inside them. Watu wengi basi hawajakuwa na ufahamu ya kwamba kuna hisia ndani zao ndani mwao ambayo inawafanya wanakuwa na hasira. And they are affected by this negative thinking and feeling. Sasa hiyo hisia iliyoko ndani yao inawaathiri. So the Bible here says that what can people do to me? What can people So the Bible says here what can people do to me? Lakini Biblia inasema kwamba je kama Mungu ako upande wangu wanadamu nao wanaweza kufanya nini kwa If God is for me kama Mungu ako sehemu yangu I will not be afraid sitaogopa What can people do to me Chochote kile ambacho wanadamu wanaweza kutenda kwa ajili yangu And Romans 8:31 Warumi sura ya 8 mstari wa 31 Warumi sura ya 8 mstari wa 31 The second part sehemu ya pili If God is for us who can be against us Mungu akiwa upande wangu ni nani atakayekuwa kinyume na mimi So if God is for us people cannot be against us Basi kama uko sehemu ya Mungu hata wale wanapokuwa kinyume na wewe wanafanya kazi bure They cannot take away the blessings of God Hawawezi wakakunyang'anya zile baraka za Mungu alizokuandalia But one person can take away the blessings for you. Lakini mtu mmoja anaweza fanya baraka za Mungu zisikufikie. Who is that person? Ni nani huyo? Satan. The person is you. Mtu sio shetani ambaye ana samahan anayeweza kuzuia baraka zako sio shetani lakini ni wewe mwenyewe. If you allow people to affect you, then you will ruin God's plan. Ya kwamba unapokubali watu wakuje wa kuharibu kuharibu mipango zako katika maisha yako wewe utapoteza mwelekeo. If you allow Satan 
If you allow Satan to take you through your sins, then it's you who destroyed the plan. Ukikubali shetani akurejeshe katika dhambi, wewe ndiye umekubali na wewe ndiye utaharibiwa. I hope you remember what it says. Satan cannot do anything to you if you have a close relationship with God and handle your life well. Naamini utakumbuka kile amesema kwamba basi kama Mungu ako sehemu yako, hata shetani hawezi akaja akanyang'anya baraka zako. We are the only person who can destroy the plan of God in our lives. In Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. Warumi sura ya 12 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa pili. Warumi sura ya 12 mstari wa kwanza hadi 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 mstari wa pili. If we offer a body as a living sacrifice to God, kama tunaweza kutoa mili zetu zikawe dhabihu iliyo hai, and then we do not conform to the world, na susije tukafa tuka copy mitindo za ulimwengu huu, and be transformed by the renewal of the mind, na tukabadilishwe kwa kufanya mawazo yetu upya, then we can discern God's good and perfect pleasing will. Unaweza basi kujua mpango wa Mungu wa kupendeza ndani ya maisha yako. So if we dedicate our life to God, unapoachilia maisha yako kwa Mungu, do not be changed by the world, do not conform to the world. Usije tena ukabadilishwe na ulimwengu. Do not be affected by people. Usije tena ukaadhiriwa na watu. Do not eat the garbage from the people. Usikule takataka kutoka kwa watu. But be transformed by the renewal of the mind. Lakini ukage uzwe kwa kufanywa mawazo yako upya and then we can enter God's plan na sasa utaweza kuingia katika mpango wa Mungu so it depends on what we set eyes on aha inategemea ni kitu gani ambacho wewe umekitazamia in colossians it says that colossians katika wa kolosai nasema hivi do not set your mind on the world but set your things and the things above. Usiweke mawazo yako kwenye vitu vya dunia hii lakini weka mawazo yako kwa vitu vinavyotoka juu mbinguni. So we discern that people who talk negatively na sasa tunapambanua ya kwamba watu wanaoongea maneno kinyume these words have no authority maneno haya hayana mamlaka. These words the negative words are the fiery darts of Satan. Imhaya maneno ya kinyume na na mipango ya ya ibilisi haina mamlaka. If we think about them it will destroy our life. Lakini unapofikiri kuyahusu yataribu maisha yako. When Mary heard the message from the angel about the birth of Jesus, wakati Mariamu aliposikia ujumbe kutoka kwa malaika kuhusu kuzaliwa kwa Kristo Yesu, she kept thinking about what Gabriel the angel said to her. Yeye aliendelea kuwaza kuhusu kile ambacho malaika alimwambia. She did not think about the negative words of people. Now, but why do people think about this negative words of people? Because in the heart we say it's unfair. Kwa sababu katika mbele zetu tunasema kwamba sio vyema. Why did he do that to me? Mbona huyo mtu akafanya hivyo kwangu? He should do it to me. Mbona ha, hajafanya vizuri kwangu? So we think it's unfair. Kwa hivyo tunafikiria kwamba ni jambo baya. And inside us inside us we have this anger. Na ndani mwetu tunakuwa na hasira. We refuse to forgive. Sasa tunakataa kusamehe. We refuse to let go. Na tunakataa kuliashiria hilo jambo liende. The more we hold on to these thoughts, tunapoendelea kushikilia mawazo haya, the more we destroy our lives. Ndivyo tunavyoendelea kuharibu maisha yetu. So Jesus said, we can only have one master. Yesu anasema kwamba unaweza kuwa na Bwana mmoja tu. You either love the Lord or money. Yaani ni kwa mfano umpende Mungu ama ukataa kumpenda Mungu na upende pesa. It cannot be both at the same time. Haiwezi kuwa mbili mara moja unapenda pesa so na upende Mungu. If it's on the negative words of people. Basi kama mawazo yetu yanaangalia tu sehemu mbaya ya watu wa maneno kinyume. A whole life is affected by that. Maisha yetu yote yameharibiwa na hayo mawazo kinyume. But if every day we declare the grace of God. Lakini kama kila siku tunatangaza neema ya Mungu. He's loving me. Ananipenda. He's blessing me. He is a wonderful plan. No one can destroy the plan. Hakuna anayeweza kuharibu upa. And he'll give me strength. Na Mungu ananipa nguvu. I don't have to worry about it. Mimi sitaanza kubabaika na mambo mengi. I don't have to feel unfair. Sita hisi vibaya. Now, is it easy to do? Ndio rahisi tu kufanya vitu kama hizo. Mtu anaposema jambo mbaya wewe unaliachia ndio naenda hauli baby. Ni rahisi ama ni ngumu? I want to say it is not easy. 
Na ye anataka kusema kwamba sio rahisi. Right down it's not easy. Andika chini kwamba sio rahisi because the sinful nature wants to be angry. Kwa sababu uasilia wa mwanadamu ni uasilia wa kukasirika. Because the sinful nature wants to remember the bad things of people. Kwa sababu asili ya mwanadamu ni asili ya dhambi ambayo itakumbuka maneno mabaya ama maneno ya kinyume ya watu. And also a low self image is hurts. Na pia unapata kwamba ile sura ambayo iliumbiwa ndani mwako imekwisha adhirika. We feel hurt because people step on us. Sasa unasikia kwamba umeumizwa ya mtu anapokukanyaga. So for every Christian to be strong, kwa kila mkristo yeyote kuwa na nguvu, we need to have a firm foundation in Jesus Christ alone. Ni lazima uwe na msingi ulio imara katika Kristo. Jesus has a wonderful plan. Ya kwamba Yesu ana mpango mwema. Nobody can destroy the plan. Hakuna anayeweza kuharibu huo mpango. And I can rejoice in the Lord. Na unaweza kufurahia katika Bwana. Be strength from the Lord. Lazima upate nguvu kutoka kwa Bwana. Now let me use an illustration. Hebu nikatumie mfano tena. Have you seen a crazy man here? I don't know if you crazy man Hatujui kama hapa mchangani kuna weu lakini ushawaiona mweu. Wait, wow. have you seen crazy people? Yeah. Crazy people were all the people, right? For no reason. Yaani mtu akiwa mweu akikuona mbele anakupigia kelele hata kama hujafanya chochote. Okay, let me ask you. If a crazy man yell at you, will you be unhappy for a month? Je, huyo mweu akikupigia kelele kule njia, utaendelea kumkasirikia kwa kipindi cha mwezi mzima? No. Because you know you know he's crazy, right? Kwa sababu unajua yeye ana kichaa cha Mungu. You will try to forget it as quickly as possible. Wewe yani hayo mambo itaishia hapo hapo. Because you know, you know he's crazy. Kwa sababu unajua yeye ni mweu. And I want to say the people around us are not crazy. Nataka kusema watu wanaotuzunguka sio kwamba wao ni weu, but they are sinners. Lakini wao ni watenda dhambi. Sinners hurt people. Na watenda dhambi wanawajeruhi watu. And sinners words are not necessarily true. Na kwa hivyo basi maneno ya wenye dhambi sio ya muhimu. So we know that these words are like the words of a crazy man. Alike is not the same. It's like Now if this is a crazy man, and he says something unpleasant to you, na You say it doesn't matter. That is his problem. And then you try to forget as quickly as possible. We can do the same with sinners. Hata hivyo kwa wale wanaokuongelea maneno kinyume yawezekana wewe unaweza kufanya hivyo. But don't tell him he's a sinner. Lakini usimwambie kwamba wewe unasema hivyo kwa sababu wewe Don't tell him he's a crazy man. Usimwambie kwamba yeye ana kichaa. You just in your heart you discern he has this fiery dust from Satan. Katika moyo wako wewe unapambanua uelewe kwamba mambo haya yametoka kwa shetani. When he speaks we don't have to take it seriously. Kwa hivyo anapoongea usiyachukulie uzito maneno yao. When he said that you are useless, anapokuambia wewe hata haufai. You will not become useless right away. Haimaanishi anaposema hivyo sasa wewe unageuka unabadilika unakuwa mtu ambaye haufai. We we can turn it off. Yaani unaweza iwachilie so yeye. keep saying it doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter. Unaposema kwamba wewe ni mjinga wewe unasema haijalishi unayosema. And I trust in God and say God is blessing me. Wewe amini Mungu na mwambie Mungu Mungu najua ijapo kuwa ananitusi mimi ni mjinga najua wewe unanibariki. Now the method is very simple. Yaani mwelekeo hapa ni rahisi zaidi. This sir now when you stand the methods. Aya andika sasa tena mambo haya chini. This sir people. Hebu wachunguze watu na waelewe. Some people get angry easily. Watu wengine ni wale wa kukasirika tu haraka haraka. Some people hurt people easily. Watu wengine wanajeruhi watu haraka haraka. So when we discern that he's like that, don't expect good things from him. Sasa ukishawajua watu hawa, wewe usitarajie jambo lolote njema kutoka kwa watu kama hao. Don't be hurt by him. Kwa hivyo wewe huyo mtu asije akukasirisha. So this sir for number one. Number one lazima wachunguze. Number two, ya pili discern the words that he speak hebu chunguza maneno anayoyanena chunguza maneno anayoyaongea if it's negative words if it is garbage kama ni maneno mabaya ambayo nitakataka the rule is don't eat garbage sheria hapo ama kanuni hapo ni usile takataka 
only eat the good promises of God. Kula tu ahadi nzuri za Mungu. Only eat the good, the grace of God. Kula tu neema ya Mungu. And also we can eat positive words from people. Na pia unaweza kula maneno mazuri ya watu. So don't eat the garbage. Kwa hivyo usile taka taka and think of the good things of God. Fikiria kuhusu vitu vyema vinavyotoka kwa Mungu. And then number four, na ya nne, we need to clear our emotion. Clear our emotions. We have to clear our emotions. Yes. It should be number three. Or number three. We have to clear. Actually, don't eat garbage is number three. Don't eat the garbage is number three. Okay. Number one, discern the person. Ya kwanza, chunguza huyo mtu. Number two, discern the words. Chunguza maneno ya huyo mtu. Number three, don't eat garbage. Ya tatu, kusile taka taka. Number four, Clear our negative emotions. Yanne ni kwa mahebu safisha isia zako kinyume. And I want to say this is not easy. Nataka kusema kwa mbasi ora isi. We have to keep. We have to keep telling ourselves. Ni lazima tuendele kuji kuji ambia. When I love God, God is blessing me. Ni napo mpenda mungu mwa ni bariki. I have strength from the Lord. Bita kuwa na nguvu kutoka kwa mungu. And God is a wonderful plan. Na mungu na mpango mzuri. I can rejoice in the Lord. And na weza kufrai ya katika kwa. I can forget about it. Na weza kusahau pia usu. I can put down this person in. Put down the negative words of this person. Na weza kuweka chini haya maneno yote kinyume ya wanadamu. So put it down and then. It takes time to build up the positive emotions. Rio ina chukua muda kujenga sasa yale mawazo mazuri kwa mwanadamu. That we can build up the joy again. Ya kwa matena unaweza jenga furaha mara tena. That takes time. Ina chukua muda. Now, I have this experience I was hurt by someone. Ye ana ana uzoevu hu ye ali umizwa na mtuflani. And I handle it. Na akashugulikia jambo hilo ana. I said I don't have to be affected. Akasema kwa mama mimi sisi ni kuadiri. And I keep praising God. Akayendelea kumsifu mungu. I felt better. Akasikia vizuri. But in the middle of the night when I woke up, lakini usiku alipo amka, I felt pressure in my heart. Alisikia kwa mama tena ni le jambo le dunia katika moyo wake na sikia vicho mwa kabisa. Because the negative words of people can affect our emotions. Kwa sababu maneno kinyume ya watu yanaweza athiri isia zetu. So he kept rejoicing in the Lord. Kwa hivyo yeye aliendelea kumwamini Mungu. Kept putting down the negative words. Aliendelea kuweka chini and rejoice in the Lord. Na akafurahia katika Bwana. Then I The next day I'm free. Na siku inayofuata yeye ako huru kabisa. But there are some people that I know na kuna watu ambao yeye anawajua. When they talk to me, wanapo ni zungumza. They keep telling me this person did this to me, that person did that to me. Everyone is bad to me. Wanapo zungumza wanamwambia kwamba huyo mtu alifanya hili, huyo alimwambia hili, huyo alimtendea hili. And when they think about all the bad things of people, na sasa wanapo wata kufikiria mambo mabaya ya watu. The life is full of sadness. Maisha yana jawa na uzuni. And they cannot have the joy of the Lord. Na hawezi wakawa na furaha ya Mungu. Okay? Now, let me tell you one way that we can handle all these hurt feelings from the past. Hebu basi ni kwa ni kusaidia uelewe unaweza shukrikia namna gani namna gani mambo ambayo yalikuwa dhidi ya pale kipindi cha nyuma. I know this when I'm praying or when I'm washing dishes or when I'm doing other things sometimes the thought would come up to me about this person. Anasema kwamba anapofanya shughuli zake lile wazo la mtu aliyemkosea hapo kitambo linamrudia tena. When I heard about this person, when I think about this person, immediately I will handle it. Anaposhukuanza kuhusu hilo jambo, hapo na hapo analishughulikia. I would say it doesn't matter what he did to me. Atasema kwamba haijalishi lile alilonifanyia. I can have compassion on the person. Mimi naweza endelea kumpenda mtu huyo. Now this is very important. You write down have compassion on the people who hurt us. Basi andika chini ya kwamba yule mtu aliyekuumiza hebu ukamuonyeshe upendo. Because people who hurt us has been hurt by many people before. Sababu watu wanao tujeruhi wao pia walipisha kujeruhi wana watu wengine. They has been hurt from childhood. Katika kuanzia utoto wao pia wao walijeruhiwa, waliumizwa. So they have a miserable life. 
Kwa hivyo wao wanaishi maisha ya uchochole, maisha mabaya. So I have compassion on the person. Mtu huyu hebu kamuonyeshe upendo. And say his life is miserable. Kamwambie ai ujisemeze kwamba maisha yake sio mazuri. I ask God to bless him. Uombe Mungu ambariki. And I say to God, if I have a way, I will bless him too. Na umwambie Mungu kama ningelikuwa na uwezo ningelimbariki mtu huyu. So when I can have compassion on him then I can bless him and forgive him. Kwa hivyo unapokuwa na upendo na huyo mtu pia unaweza ukamsamehe. The more I do it the more I can let go. Unapoendelea kusema hivyo ndivyo inavyoendelea kuisha katika mawazo yao. So all the people that have heard me I will handle it. Kwa hivyo watu wote ambao walimjeruhi yeye atawashughulikia. And also if I have hurt people na kama pia yeye amewajeruhi watu. I will always say sorry. Kila wakati atawaambia poleni. And then trying to correct the situation ajaribu kutengeneza amani na hao watu and also in my prayer na katika maombi yake i would say lord help me not to mistreat people again atawaambia mungu nisaidie ili kwamba nisije nikawakosea hao watu help me to be nice to people nisaidie nikawe mtu mwema kwenye hao watu so when i was doing ordinary things in a life i noticed god brought to memory of this negative experiences basi yeye anapoendelea kufanya kuanza mambo haya anaanza kuhisi kwamba Mungu anamsaidia mambo haya yanaisha katika maisha yake. And then I handle these problems. Na hizo shida anaendelea kuzishughulikia. And then I'm free. Sasa anakuwa huru. And then I have the joy again. Na sasa anajana na furaha. Sometimes I have to do it many many times. Wakati mwingine anaweza kufanya katika vipindi vingi. So this is how God handles our memory. Even if you vile Mungu anavyoshughulikia mawazo yetu. But some people when they think about these bad people, lakini watu wengi wanapofikiria kuhusu hao watu wabaya. They will say, "Oh, they have taken a lot from me." Wanasema huyo mtu simpendi, amechukua vitu vyangu vingi sana. I lost everything because of them. Yaani nimepoteza vitu vingi kwa sababu yao. Maybe a husband that has divorced a wife. Kwa mfano mwanaume amempa talaka mke. And the woman kept thinking about the man. Na sasa huyo mke anaendelea kuwaza kuhusu huyo mume. Does it do any good? Je, hiyo inamsaidia nini huyo mwanamke aliyepewa talaka? Inapotezea muda. Well, just a waste of time. So it's a waste of time and it's destroy our life. Yaani hiyo inapoteza muda na pia inaharibu maisha yetu. Even though some people took away something from us, God can give it back to us. Mungu anaweza kuzirejesha. The Bible says, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. Maniko na sema kwa waka utafteni kwanza ufalme wa Mungu na haki yake na mabo mengine yote yataongezewa. So God can give it back to us. Kwa hivyo Mungu ataweza kuzirejesha. Okay, now any question about this? Because It's not a complicated theory. It's not a complicated method. Yaani hizi nchi ni rahisi tu sio zile ambazo za kuchanganya watu ni rahisi sana. Kuna mtu ako na swali. It's all taken from the Bible. Yaani hizi njia zote amezitoa katika Biblia. This sort of people is so the words ya kwamba ukachunguze watu, uchunguze maneno yao. Don't eat the garbage. Usikule taka taka. Eat the good things from God. Kula vitu vizuri vinavyotoka kwa Mungu. Clear our negative emotions. Na ukasafishe hisia zako. But you find it's very simple and effective. Utaona ni vitu rahisi na ni vitu nzuri kabisa. Now write this down. I have a five step to victory. Five Kuna, step to victory. Kuna hatua tano za ushindi. Uandike chini sasa. You need to write this down. Hatua tano za ushindi. Okay the first step is aware how people affect us. Hebu uwe na ufahamu ya kwamba watu fulani wamekujeruhi yule ya kwanza. So repeat repeat in your language. Aha uwe na ufahamu tare ujiandika baba. Ufahamu kwamba huyu mtu amekujeruhi. Uwe na huo ufahamu. No number 2. Number 2 baba. That's number 1. Ya pili baba tu kwa ya kwanza. Okay. Number two. Ya pili. Believe is destructive. Basi amini kwamba ni aribifu. Amini kwamba ni aribifu. Ya kwanza umeamini kwamba huyu amenijeruhi, si ndio? Sasa ya pili unjue kwamba kwa sababu amenijeruhi, hilo jambo linaweza kufanya nini? Kukuharibu. Kwa hivyo amini kwamba ni aribifu. Yale majeraha ni ya uharibifu. If I'm affected by people is destructive. No, number two, it's destructive. So I'm just explaining. If I'm affected by people, it's destructive to my life. Aha, anazimuta kile nimekuisha kusema kwamba kama umeadiriwa na watu jua kwamba 
yale majeraha yao yanaweza yakakuharibu wewe number 3 ya tatu what does the bible tell me to do je biblia inanambia nifanye nini hiyo ndio ya tatu biblia inanambia nifanye nini biblia inataka nifanye nini na msaidie leo kutoka kumsaidia kutafsiri uze umeingia. And number four, ya nne, pray for forgiveness and for strength. Ya nne sasa, omba kwa sababu ya msamaha na kwa sababu ya nguvu. Omba msamaha na ujazwe na nguvu za Mungu. Omba msamaha na ujazwe na nguvu za Mungu. Number five, ya tano, choose to obey God. Chagua kumtii Mungu. Ya tano, chagua kumtii Mungu. Ya tano, chagua kumtii Mungu. Hapo Sasa mchungaji watu wengine hawaandiki. Huku ambiwa kwamba hawakuambiwa kwamba ni seminar. Okay. Chagua kumtii Mungu. So now I apply this how to help yourself. So I apply it now. Apply it now to how to be not to be affected by people. Aya sasa nataka mambo haya uyaweke katika mazoezi jinsi gani ambavyo hauwezi ukaadhiriwa na watu. First, I'm aware someone says something and affected me. Ya kwanza umekwisha kujua kwamba mtu huyo amekwisha kunijeruhisha. Yes. Anaeleza yale. Anaeleza yale ambayo tumeandika. This is a plan. Number two, I know if I'm affected, it will be destructive. Na ya pili tumese ujue kuamba kwa kweli kama ni meadhiriwa na hawa watu, itaweza kuniaribu mimi. Number three. Ya tatu. What does the Bible say? Biblia inasema mimi nifanye nini, inataka nijue nini. The Bible says, if God is for me, who can be against me? Na unayua kama Biblia inasema kuamba kama mungu aku upande wangu. Ni nani atakaye kuwa kinyume na mimi? And I can have compassion and forgive. Na sasa kwa sababu nimejua mba haya yote, nitawapenda hawa watu na niwasamehe. And number four, na ya nne, I pray for forgiveness if I have mistreated this person. Na hawa watu kwa sikama wame niyadhiri kwa sababu miu ndole nitangulia kuwa jeruhi na omba msamaha. And I pray for strength. Na nina omba mungu wa nijaze mungu. And number five, na ya tano, I choose to let go. Nina chagua kutoshikilia mambo hayo nina ya achilia ya hindi not to think about what he has said sita wanza kuhusu hayo mambo but I think about the promises of God lakini nita wanza kuhusu ahadi za mungu think about how you can bless the person nita wanza jinsi na vyoweza kubariki hawa watu now this five steps to victory is helpful in every way you handle any problem hizi hatua tano za ushindi zita kusaidia jinsi unageweza kusukulikia maswa la haya katika nyanja zote za kimaisha it will help us to handle negative emotions zita kusaidia jinsi ya kusukulikia hisia zako it help us to overcome sins zita kusaidia ushinde dhambi so remember these five steps hebu kumbuka hizi hatua tano can you say these five steps shortly just one word one or two words for each step five steps kwenye hizi hatua tano kuna mambo ama mawili mawili tu ambayo unaweza kuyazungumzia kuhusu okay now so i say one word or one phrase and then you repeat that number one, aware ya kwanza ujue ama utambue mwambie nyumba yangu nikisema tunarudia tu yale mambo umeandika kwa hivyo ya kwanza imekuwa nini Aya, sasa sema utambue. Utambue. So one can can you end it in one word? Aware. Number one, aware. Na ya kwanza si umekwisha kutambua. Aya, sema utambue. Okay. It's one word. What is one word? Okay. Number two, destructive. Ya pili ni alibifu. Number three, Bible. Yata to Biblia. Biblia. Number four, pray. Yanne Omba. Omba. Number five, obey. Yata no T. Okay. Let me ask you now. Ebony Mawulize says, "Have some people affected you now?" Sasa hivi. 
hata kwa mfano ulipokuwa kujiandaa kuja kwenye huu mkutano kuna mtu ambaye amekuadhiri amekujeruhi can you let go unaweza kuachilia ile jambo lipondokee liende usahau some people say my wife my husband next me so much aha mtu mwingine ataweza kusema kwamba mume wangu au mke wangu mimi alichukia zaidi and he says unbearable anasema kwamba hata mimi siwezi nikavumilia mambo haya and i want to say this tangu sema hivi the person has been like that huyo mtu lazima akuwe hivyo na we also watch our behavior lakini pia nasi tukajitunguze tabia zetu if we listen to them they won't next so much tukiendelea kuwasikiliza wataendelea kukujeruhi zaidi if we are gentle we won't they won't next so much lakini ukiwa mpole kwao yani huyo atakuwa anakupigia kelele wewe uko tu mpole si atachoka nawe na kuatilia if we are nice to them they won't next so much na pia kama wewe utakuwa mwema kwao utaona hata wewe kama anakupigia kelele haribu mdao so the first thing is i have to learn not to be affected by them kwa hivyo sasa lazima ujifundishe ujue kwamba mimi sitaki kuadhiriwa na mtu kama huyo and i will listen to them and do what they suggest us to do na nitawasikiliza nifanye kile ambacho wananiomba kufanya and be nice to them na niwe wema kwao there is a chance of relationship can improve hapo pia utapata uhusiano wako hata katika ndoa unaweza kuendelea kupanuka kuwa mzuri zaidi now for teaching children too kwa kuwafundisha watoto pia many times the parents are affected by the children disobedience wakati mwingine wazazi pia wanaathiriwa na watoto wao ambao wamekataa kutii so they get angry easily sasa wazazi wanakasirishwa na spend the child na wanachapa huyo mtoto and the child disobey more na yaani mtoto vile unavyoendelea kumchapa kwa sababu yeye ni kiburi so kichwa ngumu ndivyo anavyoendelea kuwa kichwa ngumu so the parents are affected by the child sasa unapata hata huyo mzazi ameathirika kwa sababu ya huyo mtoto but if the parents realize a child is just a little child lakini kama mzazi utajua tu huyu ni mtoto mdogo and a child has no self image because the parents sometimes say you are no good na utapata hao watoto wengine wanakuwa eh, wa, wa, vichwa ngumu hiyo kwa sababu wewe mzazi kila siku ndio unamwambiana wewe una kichwa ngumu and we want to encourage them and tell them god loves you wewe kile ufanye uwaimize hao watoto uambie Mungu anawapenda. I love you. Na hata mimi nawapenda. You can become a great person. Unaweza kuwa mtu mkuu. God has a wonderful plan in your Mungu life. Mungu ana mpango mzuri na maisha yako. And it guide them to think. Na hebu ukasaidie hao watoto pia kuanza kuwa. You can be a great person. Na kwamba unaweza kuwa mtu mkubwa. Do you want to be a great person? Ungelipenda kuwa mtu mkubwa? So do you want to obey God? Ungemtii Mungu and study. Ukimtii Mungu alafu ufanye mazoezi ya usome zaidi so we are not affected by emotions ya kwamba wasije pia wakaadhirika kwa sababu ya hisia we can help the child unaweza kusaidia hao watoto but if we are affected by emotions lakini kama tumeadhirika kwa sababu ya hisia the child would have more and more rebelliousness against us hapo ndipo sasa huyo mtoto atakuwa mwenye kiburi zaidi Many Christians didn't realize that. Wa Kristo wengi hawakugundua mambo haya. The frustration inside has caused the family members to have rebelliousness. Yaani wao kule kukasirishwa kwao kumefanya kumeleta madhara mabaya katika familia zao. Because we have not handled our negative feelings. Ni kwa sababu sisi kama wazazi ya kwanza hatujashughulikia hisia zetu. Okay. Uliko kwenye pale watu wanaokuumiza. My question Goes back to those people who are speaking negative things about you. The teacher has said that uh, you show them compassion. Ime kwa ndogo jambo la pili sikuelewa kwamba baada ya upendo unachukua fanye nini tena? So after you have shown them compassion what else do you show them apart from compassion? Now what we talk about now is mainly about handling ourselves. Kile ambacho tunazungumza kwa sasa ni jinsi ya kujishughulikia wewe mwenyewe kwanza. So that we don't have anger. Ili kwamba wewe usiwe na hasira. As far as helping this person, unavyo eh, unavyomsaidia huyu mtu, it's a totally different teaching. Hilo ni fundisho lingine tofauti. Then we need to use guidance. Ambalo unahitaji kutumia kitu ambacho kinaitwa kuelekea acceptance ya kwamba kukubalika if someone says something negative to us ya kwamba mtu anaposema kitu kibaya kwako depending on what who the person is kutegemea ni nani huyo anayezungumza for instance is the wife kwa mfano ni mkeo we should listen and say 
how can I do better? Hebu tusikilize na tuulizane je, tunafanya vipi vizuri? So first thing is we're not affected by the emotion when the wife is angry. Ya kwanza wewe hautaadhirika na hisia wakati mkeo anapongea maneno kinyume kuku. Now if we did something wrong we should apologize. Na kama wewe umefanya kitu kibaya uombe msamaha. But sometimes husband and wife relationship has a lot of hidden anger. Lakini unapata kwamba wanandoa wengi wako na ile hasira ya kuficha. Because through the years there was not much listening and responding to the person. Kwa sababu miaka mingi imepita ambapo hakuna mtu aliyekuwa anasikiliza mwingine na kumtikia mwingine. So we want to listen to the person. Kwa hivyo lazima ukasikilize huyo mtu. And use guidance. Yesterday we talked about guidance. Na utumie kupeana mwelekeo. What would you like me to change? Ungenipenda mimi basi? Nibadilishe wapi? How can I do this better? Nitafanya vipi vizuri hili jambo? But sometimes it's easy for us to say you're always getting angry with me. Lakini wakati mimi ni rais sana sisi kusema kwamba umenia umenifanyia mambo mabaya zaidi. It's going to hurt the relationship more. Hiyo itaharibu uhusiano wetu zaidi. Now if it's a church member kama ni mshirika wa kanisa we also want to listen hebu pia tumsikilize tell me why you are unhappy about certain things kumwambia je mshirika wangu wewe ni mzuri hebu naambie mbona vitu hivi vimekukasirisha can we improve je ni wapi tunaoweza kurekebisha i would suggest as pastors and leaders we want to listen to people nina ninaomba kwamba wachungaji na viongozi tuwe watu wa kusikiliza watu wakiongea it doesn't mean we have to obey everything they say Haimaanishi kwamba lazima tutii yale ambayo wanayozungumza. But we listen to them and then we say, "Oh, now I know how you think and how you feel." Lakini unapowasikiliza wakiongea itakusaidia ujue hisia zao ni zipi. And then we try sometimes we need to find a few leaders to discuss together. Na sasa wewe ukishachukua mambo haya kama mchungaji, usishughulikie peke yako. Iita wale wazee wa kanisa mkae pamoja mshughulikie jambo hilo nyingi wote. Now, if this person is one of your relative is always complaining all the time. Na kwa mfano huyu mtu ni mojapo ya watu wa jamii yako na yeye huwa analalamika kila wakati. No matter what you do they still complain. Haijalishi umewafanyia nini bado watalalamika. And they cannot change at all. Na hawawezi wakabadilika kivi yao. Sometimes you just show them more love and care. Yaani wewe usiangalie ya kwamba wanalalamika endelea kuwapenda na kuwaonyesha upendo. Hopefully they will soften them. Ha kwa manaki unapoendelea kuonyesha upendo ule upendo utawatuliza but it will be hard for them to change ijapo kuwa itakuwa ngumu kwao sana wao kubadilisha so you have to some people can change a little bit some people cannot lazima upambanue uelewe kwamba kuna watu wengine wanaweza kubadilika kidogo lakini wengine hawawezi kubadilika how to change people is a big big topic jinsi ya kubadilisha watu basi ni fundisho lingine kubwa mno okay there are issues any other question swali lingine You know what I want to say is God has shown me these teachings through my difficulties in life. Kila nataka kusema ni kwamba Mungu amenipa mafundisho haya kupitia vipindi vigumu ambavyo nimevipitia katika maisha yangu. And I find out from the Bible how to handle those problems. Na nimepata katika Biblia jinsi ya kushughulikia matatizo haya. So I encourage all the teachers of the Bible, ninawahimiza wote wa walimu wa Biblia Don't just talk about the Bible and really unrelated to people. Hebu usizungumuze tu kuhusu Biblia na usije ukaelete kwa wanadamu. But we see problem in daily life. Unapoona matatizo katika maisha ya kawaida, we ask God, how I how can I handle this problem with the Bible? Unauliza Mungu basi nitashughulikia vipi jambo hili katika Biblia. Then your teaching is not just about the Bible alone. Na mafundisho yako isiwe tu ya Biblia peke yake. It's about how to put the Bible into our daily life. Unawafundisha jinsi ya kuweka Biblia katika maisha yao ya kila siku.